my god, I can't believe my eyes. How can she lift that massive rock all by herself? She's got to be one of those Adepti, surely. Oh, mighty Adeptus, please give me your blessing, so that in the coming year I may reap a more bountiful salary. This is top tier in size and quality, and the condition it's in is quite simply You're immaculate. Congratulations, this item is approved for submission. I'm going to award you full marks for the Sunset Vermilionite item. May I take your name? My name isn't important. I'm not even here to compete. I was just delivering this for some other people. They should be here any minute now. Shenhe, and Ningguang's little helper. I need the helper. Ah, so you're the ones behind this. No wonder. The rarest talent turns in the rarest plostrite specimen. But I have to correct you on one point. It's not helper. It's secretary. <laughs> okay then, Miss Secretary, what do you think of the rock we found? Pretty amazing, right? In truth, it is the finest piece of plostrite we have received so far. If everything goes according to plan, we will use this piece in the foundation of the Jade Chamber, which will enable us to proceed to the next stage of construction. As a side note, Lady Ningguang has rented some dwellings in the nearby area to serve as accommodations for the contestants. If you need a place to rest, you are welcome to stay there. Now, please excuse me. As you can see, there is still a lot of work to do on the building site. Shenhua! Shenhua! Just now on the way over, pretty much everyone was singing your praises! Oh, really? What kind of so strange. Aren't you happy about it? Whenever Paimon gets praised, Paimon can't help but hold their head up high and break into a big, smug smile. I've had similar compliments before. They call me an adeptus, treat me with great deference and respect, as if I'm set apart from the common folk. Yeah. Because that's how adept I are. At least the ones we've met are pretty unique and reclusive, too. Way different than normal people. But uh, I am not... Uh... Shenha? I'm fine. I've been exerting myself quite a lot ever since we set foot in that abode. Uh, I'm just a little fatigued. Um... Well... Byron said that there are some makeshift hotels we can use, right? Let's go check in and take a rest. <sighs> no need. I simply need to find myself a secluded place in the wilderness to sit and meditate in silence. You can't do that. It's dangerous out in the wild on your own. When you're hungry, you go eat something tasty. And when you're tired, you go lie down in a nice, comfy bed. All right? Seriously, don't punish yourself like this. Well, why don't you find one this way? Okay. If you insist. Great! Now we're talking. Let's head to our hotel. Hotel? Hi there. Checking in, are we? You're just in time. We only have two rooms left. Since this was chosen as the building site for the new Jade Chamber, we've had a constant stream of people in this area. And not just workers, either. Visitors, business people, tea sellers, all sorts. So, business is booming for me today. Very few vacancies. You're lucky you got here when you did. Great! One of your rooms is still being cleaned. I, I guess it should be ready within the hour. The other room is just at the door on the left. Here are your keys. All right. Hope you enjoy your stay. Please excuse me. I'll leave you to it. Shenha, you should go get some rest. We'll hang around outside until the other room's ready. Hyman's gonna go see if there's anything good to eat around here. <laughs> Hyman couldn't help but notice one of the guests walk in with a huge grilled chicken drumstick before. Let's buy one for 
for Shenhua, too. She can have it as a midnight snack. Or save it for breakfast tomorrow. <sighs> All right. I will head to my room for now. If you need anything, don't hesitate to disturb me. I'm a light sleeper. I will hear if you knock on the door. Mm-hmm. See you tomorrow. Hey! Isn't that Cloud Retainer? What's she doing here? Hmm. Let's go and say hi. One trusts you have met Shen He. So, are you getting along quite well? So far, so good. Yeah! So, you know Shen He too, Cloud Retainer? Naturally. Save for Ganyu, who spends the majority of her time in Liyue Harbor. All the Adepti living today are acquainted with Shen He, to some degree. Adeptus name anyway. Calling her Shenhua feels kind of friendly, but also kind of disrespectful. So Paimon's thinking maybe it'd be better if we called her by her Adeptus name instead. Her Adeptus name? Why pray tell would Shenhua have an Adeptus name? Uh, don't all Adepti have a special title they go by? On this latter point, you are correct. However, Shen He is human. Oh, oh, right. Wait, what? Paimon, neither! This is a real surprise! Do you mean to say that she presents differently from ordinary human beings? Ah, oh, yes. She was like this all those years ago when one first met her. In this respect, she has not changed. One first found Shanha by chance in a cave. One was passing by and sensed the presence of a god's remains. Being of an ever-vigilant disposition, one entered immediately to inspect the scene. Inside was Shen He, then aged around six years old. In her hand, she held a dagger with which she was confronting a monster that was the god's remains incarnate. That sounds so dangerous. When one arrived, she had already been locked in confrontation with this monster for several days. Most mortal children are fragile, both physically and mentally, and are highly reliant on their parents for survival, but not so her. That she was able to endure such terrible danger was due not only to her strong willpower, but also to the bloodlust and homicidal instinct with which she was born. One dealt with the monster, yet she still refused to lower her guard. She even pointed her dagger in one's direction and remained ready to strike. Only after she was satisfied that one had no intention to cause her harm did she finally relent. She then passed out without uttering a single word. In other words, if you hadn't passed by that day, Shenhua might have... Healed the master? Not necessarily. Upon one's arrival, one could sense that the god's wrath was gradually receding. Even had the stalemate continued, one suspects that Shen He may have still emerged the victor of the confrontation. That's still so dangerous, though! Why was a tiny little kid battling against the wrath of a god in the first place? Alas, the mortal world is rife with suffering of every kind. And she had experienced her fair share of this, even at a tender age. Seeing that she was homeless, one decided to adopt her. You really adopt her? So this make... Wait, if... 
Senhei's Dandy, that means Kaoi Tena is the Kempa. <laughs> okay, this is my camera. Kaoi Tena is the Kempa. <laughs> oh my god, I have too much fun with this. Indeed, it is one to whom she refers. Xian He has an extraordinary constitution, making her well adapted to practicing the Adepti arts. All the Adepti cherished her talents, and so we were willing to train her. However, her homicidal urges did not subside with age. Rather, they grew stronger day by day. Moon Carver once performed a divination for her. He declared that her fate is to bear the curse of Calamity. Consumed by malevolent energy, she is prone to bring harm to those around her. Such is the magnitude of the danger this poses, that her soul must be bound with red ropes to keep her homicidal instinct at bay. The red ropes have indeed served to keep her calmer and more content. They also seem to have rendered her somewhat inexpressive. Perhaps the red ropes are so powerful that they have suppressed some of her other emotions as well. It is only by fate that people's paths may cross. Now that Shen He's path has crossed with yours, please be sure to treasure the gift that fate has given you, and take good care of her. Oh, now Paimon gets it. You came out here to check up on Shen He because you were worried about her, didn't you? Huh. You dare draw such a facile conclusion on the nature of one's present excursion? Incorrect. The truth is that while Liyue Harbor may seem peaceful today, danger is always lurking in the shadows. Looking! I'm really... I think I have a Mandela effect because this is not... My brain keeps saying that this is not how you writing look. I don't know what happened to me. Like, I keep seeing this phrase, like, looking. They are supposed to be two O's, not this. Ningguang once made a bold assertion that this is to be the era of the contract between Liu Wei and the humans. Well, one is most curious to observe how she will respond to the coming storm. What storm? If she handles it admirably, one is willing to be a witness to her achievements. But if she does not, the Adepti shall not hesitate to seize control. Let us conclude our conversation here for today. One has occupied enough of your time, and night is approaching. Be sure to get ample rest. Shenhe isn't an Adeptus after all. She just grew up around the Adepti. Oh, no wonder she doesn't like being treated as an Adeptus. Having everyone falling over themselves to show their respect all the time must be kind of hard to deal with. Okay, welcome. Okay, I guess I have to... I don't know why, but it's really dark. Um, hey! So, Shenhe... Master has relayed my situation to you, I take it. Oh? How did you know? I'd intended to wait until you came back before going to sleep, but I didn't hear you come in. I was worried that something may have happened to you. So I went outside to check and caught sight of my master. On top of this, you have been acting very strangely around me this morning, causing me to suspect that my master must have told you everything about me. After all, master is... 
very talkative. <laughs> Sorry, Shenhua. Paimon had you down as an adeptus this whole time, but it turns out Paimon was wrong. It's okay. I don't mind. The fault is mine for not explaining everything to you sooner. Because in my experience, trying to explain is a futile pursuit. Still, though you mistook me for an adeptus, you never treated me as distant and unapproachable. Instead, you treated me as you would a friend. For this, I am very grateful indeed. To be fair, we've met our fair share of real adepti, too. Anyway, now it's settled. From now on, you're our friend! Whether you're an adeptus or a human isn't the important thing. First and foremost, we're just plain old friends! Got it. Although I don't know quite what it entails in terms of what I have to do, I must say I like the title, Friend, very much indeed. Great! Well, now that we're all rested up, we should start searching for the other two items on the list. But before we do that, let's go to the building site and ask Ningwang's little helper how the progress is going. After all, Sunset Vermilionite is so rare. Paimon doubts many competitors will really be able to find any. If it turns out some of them have given up already, we'll be able to take things a little more slowly. Oh, and another thing. We bought some grilled chicken drumsticks on the way back last night. There was a place just outside. Here's one for you, Shenhua. Try it! They're so good. I concur. It has a rich flavor. Far more agreeable than those I've cooked for myself in the wilderness in the past. Oh my god. When did... Wait, how do I... When? Disappear. When did this happen? What can How? When? When? <laughs> Wait, Beidou? Something. That's because it's not finished. Hey, Violin! And hey, Beto! And hey! Um, person oh, hey, Paimon no. doesn't know? Some Paimon doesn't know. Yeah, this indeed is a surprise. Given the enormous scale of the Jade Chamber, we split the construction work into two phases to make sure the structure remains balanced. Before we find some suitable plostrite, we build the Jade Chamber's keel at ground level. Once the plostrite is ready, we place it into the keel and let the partially constructed Jade Chamber rise up to the height of the surrounding mountain peaks. The remainder of the construction work is then carried out at that altitude. Once everything is ready, we release the iron tethers and allow the Jade Chamber to rise to its target altitude. Miss Bywin, we've brought some new materials to submit. One moment, I'll be right there. The construction work has only been able to progress this rapidly thanks to the plostrite provided by you. Lady Ningguang is most grateful and looks forward to seeing more of your work. Wow, can't believe you sourced the plostrite so quickly. It's the key piece of the puzzle. Looks like you beat us to the punch. Beto, you're joining the Jade Chamber contest too? <laughs> sure am. I happened to get my hands on a chunk of Sunset Vermilionite on a voyage a while back, so I figured I'd bring it over. Huh. So even though it's rare, we're not the only ones who managed to get a hold of it. Oh, I've got some introductions to do. This is the renowned Miss Yun, or Yun Jin, probably the most famous figure in the Liyue opera scene. Never heard. Greetings. These two are Paimon and the Traveler, both good buddies of mine. And this is... um... Sorry, I'm not sure we've met. 
Shenhe. I am there. Friend. <laughs> Good to meet you. A friend of a friend is my friend too. Or, as I like to say, a mate of a crewmate is part of the crew. Miss Yun is also here for the contest. Turns out she needed to borrow a boat, so we came together. It's an honor to finally meet you both. I've heard much about you. Miss Shenhe, though we are only meeting for the first time, I have a feeling that we will get along very well indeed. Well, you two uh, kind of pair up in this update. And I think this is gonna be like the standard. New 5-star and a new 4-star. I don't think there was an update when... I think uh, the Inazuma update will come out with two 5-stars and one 4-star, something like that. But uh, yeah, you two gonna be friends. I don't know if I gonna pick up Yun, Miss Yun. From the event, but eh, who knows? To be honest with you all, I am in great need of this opportunity to ask Lady Ningguang a question. That's why I joined the contest. Thanks to my father's connections, I was able to acquire a specimen of the plostrite required. Fortunately, it was approved for submission, despite being a little on the diminutive side. Wow. So it looks like the three of us are competitors now. Excuse me for prying, Miss Shenhe, but are you competing as well? No, I don't have any questions for Ning Wong. I just wanted to help him win. In that case, I have a proposal to make. Lady Ning Wong said that the first three contestants to procure all three materials will be awarded the chance to ask a question. Really? Well, How convenient. there are three teams here. We can split the prize between us. Instead of competing against each other, we could work together to secure the top three places between us. What do you think? Okay, I think... Uh, again, the writing, how convenient all it is. You don't need to actually put Yon in this quest if you really don't need it. Like, again... The convenience, sometimes the race are more limited now. I was okay with Sehe being like a help and maybe she actually have a question and we pass, in, pass on the question to her. But now we all gonna get a question asked. Sounds great, but how does that change things exactly? <laughs> I think I see where you're going with this, Miss Yoon. The plastrite was the most difficult item to source by a long shot. Luckily, all three of us managed to get our hands on it. The two remaining items aren't quite so rare, so as long as one of us finds a way to source it, the other two can hop on the bandwagon. How'd I do? Is that what you had in mind? Precisely. Huh. Interesting approach. Okay then. Alright, I'll go first. I have some leads on these wonder cores. From what I've heard, the core itself is really not that difficult to make. The hard part is getting hold of the ore used as raw materials. I'm gonna head back to the ship and ask Su Ling if he's heard of them. You guys... We will head into town and seek advice from Master Zhang of Hanfeng's Ironmongers. Thoughts? Wonderful. We'll split into teams then, and whoever makes progress first brings all of us a step closer to victory. I'm gonna take off. See you later. And I bet this is gonna be her last appearance. Okay, let's go! By the way, what question are you gonna ask Ningguang Yunjin? I'm looking for a venue to host the performance of our new opera. Lady Ningguang has excellent judgment, so I would like to hear her opinion. Really? Ooh, what's the opera Just called? to pick up a Kaima thing. wants to go see it. The opera is a labor of love by my father. He wrote it based on a popular urban legend about an evil spirit and an adeptus. It's called The Divine Damsel of Devastation. Hmm? Ah, hello. Are you here for something off the shelf? Or do you need something forged? Excuse me, Master Zhang. We were wondering if you'd heard of something called a Wonder Core. Of course I have. 
Sorry, um, who's asking? My name is Yunjin. Perhaps you don't know me, but I believe that you forged some weaponry for my father in the past for stage use. Yunjin? Stage use? Oh, so <clears throat> you must be Miss Yoon. <clears throat> Sorry, my brain's finally caught up. <sighs> not used to doing much beyond bashing a hammer all day. <laughs> Everyone's heard of you, Miss Yoon. Even folks who don't make it to the opera all that often. <laughs> like myself. So, you're here to ask about wonder cores, huh? As it happens, I do know how to make them. Matter of fact, I made some for Lady Ningguang back when she was building the original Jade Chamber. The types of ore needed to make wonder cores are a little hard to come by. Lady Ningguang supplied them herself last time. I don't suppose you've brought any yourselves? No. We were gonna ask you what kinds of ore we need. <laughs> sure. Well, you'll need two kinds. Star Splinter Iron and Sabrosium. If I remember correctly, Lady Ningguang sourced her Star Splinter Iron from the Mount Tianhung area. They say it resonates with visions. It could take some work, but if you stick with it, you'll find some eventually. As for the Sabrosium, though, hmm, that's trickier. It's all but unheard of on the market. Hmm. So where do you mine? Where are we gonna mine this? Uh, I'm really not sure. Sorry. What I've heard is that the people around Mount Tianhung have some sort of magic trick that can pinpoint the location of the stuff. Of course, it's probably just hearsay. If you want my advice, start by looking for Star Splinter Iron around Mount Tianhung. And if you run into any locals, ask them a few questions about Sabrosium. Mount Tianhung. Interestingly enough, the story of the Divine Damsel of Devastation also takes place on that mountain. I hear the view there is quite spectacular. A favorite destination of the Adepti, in fact. Perhaps it can give me some inspiration. Let's not delay. We should head straight there. 